Hi friends, now let us discuss a problem from the design procedure that we have explained for the warm gear. Here we are going to explain a type 1 question where the details of the number of teeth are provided. Design a warm gear drive to transmit 18 kilowatt from a warm rotating at 1440 rpm to a warm wheel to rotate at 40 rpm. Checked the heat capacity of the gear and determine the efficiency. So the data that are given is very limited. Anyway, when we go through these data, we know that the power that has to be transmitted is 18 kilowatt and the reduction ratio is from 1440 to 40. So when we look at the ratio, it is going to be 36. So usually for other type of gears, a velocity ratio of ratio less than 10 is uh, advisable or in other words, it can be stated that a velocity ratio beyond 10 is not achievable using other type of single stage reduction. But using a warm and a warm wheel, such kind of uh, higher velocity ratios can be achieved. Now let us see how we are going to start this question. See initially as I have explained you in the introduction part Z1 indicates the number of start. So here in this question I am starting with Z1 as 1 single start thread normal normal type of worm. I am not uh, discussing about any kind of in, uh, in enveloping type or anything like that. It is a normal cylindrical worm with uh, one thread passing over it. So Z1 is stated as 1. So obviously Z2 has to be I into Z1, the value is going to be 36. So these two values we have obtained using the basic, basic fundamental equations. Now we know that the weaker member is always the warm wheel, so we are going to design the warm wheel. So moving forward with the calculation, obviously for the step 1, sorry in the step 1 we have identified the weaker member and now. Uh, we have to calculate the tangential tooth load. Since this is a type 1 question, it has to be obtained in terms of module. So, the value is 1000 into P Cs by V. So, uh, Cs we are going to assume it as medium shock and the value is 1.5 and velocity and the equation is pi D2 into by, uh, by 1000. So, instead of D2, I am going to substitute it as M Z2 by so, the value I have obtained as 0 0.0754 upon substitution what I got is 3580.90 by m. So, this step is very much similar to that of the uh, previous design procedure that we have executed for uh, spur gear, helical gear and bevel gear. So, there is an, another alternative design procedure is there that I will explain. Later, anyway, now let us focus our discussion on uh, the conventional type of design. So, these equations are very familiar, there is no need to explain it again and again. Uh, moving to the step number 3, uh, uh, the equation of uh, tangential load is sigma 2 Cv B uh, pi y m. So, uh, this Cv, you know that velocity factor is there, sigma 0 2 is the static stress of the weaker number which is nothing but 82.4 mega Pascal. Uh, and the value of y compared to the other uh, type of design there is no need to calculate the value of y because here the value of y can be obtained from the table 12.2 hc so if you are assuming that the uh, pressure angle of the wheel is 14 and a half degree i can go for a form factor for 0.1 if i am assuming it is 20 degree i can go for a form factor as 0.125 so here i have assumed it as alpha 20 degree and the value of form factor is 0.125 and B I am going to substitute it as 10m itself. This is a very familiar type of substitution 10m. So, upon substituting I am going to get the value as m cube Cv greater than or equal to 1080. So, we have to solve this by using the trial and error method uh, that all those things we are very familiar by applying the trial and error method we can see that the suitable module is uh, 11 but unfortunately the module 11 is not in, in the recommended series so in the preferred series i will go with the uh, module number 12 so 
so the 12 is in the acceptable or the standard module that can be adopted for this design now we have to go for the dimension See, from here onwards from the step number four onwards the, the design is going to uh, take a turn because you have to do some more calculations uh, the steps that we are going to follow may not be the same as that of the conventional design procedure some different type of data are going to come into picture so kindly uh, make sure that uh, you have a very keen uh, concentration from step number four onwards because there are lot of places where uh, you can commit mistakes so from here onwards kindly keep uh, uh, watch closely uh, how the design is executed because lot of confusions can occur also so so while studying uh, have the clarity regarding the steps uh, the way of way it is being executed so the dimension of gear we have to design obviously you know how to calculate the value of ft b 10m all those things is easy d2 is equal to mz2 that is also a very similar step uh, and the value is going to be 436mm now comes the value of p see we have a table 12.27 here uh, in the table 12.27 you can see the equations for the 14 and a half degree involute system and 20 degree involute systems so uh, here the p can be calculated using uh, uh, the equations uh, given uh, there in the data handbook in the initial uh, pages we have the equations for p that i will explain using a data handbook in the data handbook by using this particular table we can calculate the value of throat diameter d1 d1 is given in terms of uh, d2 or d1 uh, is uh, given in terms of pitch d1, d2, d2 is given in terms of model also you can adopt the value mm. the phase width also is uh, provided here uh, so anyway uh, by using this table you are supposed to calculate now let us go to the data handbook and have a clear cut um, idea about the the value of pitch diameter all those things can be easily calculated using the values given in the or equations given in the data handbook now let us look into the equations of data handbook see if you look uh, at the page number 220 you have the equation p2 is equal to pi into m2 even though in this data handbook they have stated as m1 or m2 don't worry about that the module that we have found out is can be applied for both uh, m2 is applicable for m2 also so the value of pitch is going to be pi m2 also the value is going to obtain to some 12 into 3.14 some 37 point something we are going to obtain and when we move forward to the page number 244 when we move to the page number 244 uh, we can see the proportions of the worm american gear manufacturers association even though we have table number 12.26 and 12.27 it is always advisable to go with the table 12.26 because that is a standard one of the standard association american gear manufacturers association agma so in this uh, table you can uh, calculate the value of d1 you can calculate the value of d1 here d1 equation is given in terms of module lw is the phase length that also can be calculated in terms of module h at uh, depth of the tooth can be calculated in terms of module so everything is provided here you are supposed to uh, go ahead with the calculation so if it is 20 degree uh, you can go with this equation doesn't matter whether it is a uh, triple start don't worry about that uh, you simply focus on the alpha value and choose the equation for the calculation anyway before you proceed under the step number four you should calculate the value of d1 lw and h because these values are very much required for the coming steps so this is a very important step so don't forget to calculate all these values for especially for the type 1 for the type 2 question you may not be able to calculate lw initially that i will discuss in the coming next question now you focus on calculation of d1 lw and h so now let us uh, go back uh, into the uh, design uh, calculations and again we will come back to this data handbook because we have to go 
around many equations before we uh, complete the procedure. And so this is the equation, uh, these are the values that I have uh, calculated, the pitch I told you that it is going to be somewhere close to 37 and the velocity I have d1, this is the equation 7.39 into m plus 10, the value is approximated to be 99 and LW 14.14 plus 0 0.063 into Z1, Z1 is 1 into 12 is equal to 170.43 mm, this is the value of LW. Now comes the value of gamma, how we are supposed to calculate the value of gamma, for that again we are going back into the data handbook. <coughs> if you look here you can see D1 we have already calculated and when you compare D1 to the last term Z1 m by tan gamma. So, Z1 you have as 1, m you have obtained it as 12 and D1 you have obtained it as 99. So, by using this relation, when you calculate, you can get the value of uh, gamma and the value of gamma is going to be 7.1. So, let it be uh, 6.9 something or let it be 7 degrees. This is how we are going to we are calculate the value of gamma. This is a very important step. Okay. Now, uh, the step number 6 and 7, uh, as I have already discussed this uh, in the design procedure that uh, the dynamic load calculation and wear load calculation are not that important in the case of a worm and a worm wheel. But anyway, we have to calculate this. So, the dynamic load is calculated using the equation sigma d b y m. So, 82.4 into 120 into pi into y, y is 0 0.125 into 12. Substitution is very straight and you are going to get the answer for that. And here for the wear load, again d 2 b k. But here uh, in the design of uh, worm and worm wheel, we are not going to compare Fw with Fd. Anyway, we have to compare with Fw and Fd, but we are not going to equate them together to obtain the value of k. And that procedure has got some change here. Now, let us see what is the change. So, if you look at the uh, wear load calculation, we can see that, see this is the equation for wear, Fw is equal to d 2 b k you can use this equation or uh, this equation 12.62b, both are ok. Uh, so equation 12.62b uh, requires ca some more calculation because you have to get the value of C, V, C, S and all those things. Anyway, all these values are readily available with you, you have to calculate the value of A also. This I will explain right now. But before that, F W is equal to D to B K. From where can you obtain the value of K? K is obtained from the table 12.30. Now, let us go to the table 12.0 and see what is given over there, see 12.30, this is the table, this is the table we are talking about. So, from you can see that uh, this table gives some uh, values for k for the combination. So, uh, there is no need to, to go for any kind of interpolation or something like that, you can get the value of k directly from here. So, use the value of k from this table, substitute back in that equation and see whether the value of Fw is going to be greater than Fw and that is how we are going to state whether the design is safe or not. So, you are supposed to compare Fw and Ft, but do not equate and find the value of k because you do not have a table to uh, give you the hardness for the if you find the value of k that is how you have to uh, calculate the um, step number 5 and 6, six and 7. Okay. Now, I think there is a numbering issue, step number 4 and after that you have to go for step number 5 and 6, it is wrong that on 6 and 7. Okay. Anyway. So, dynamic load we have calculated, wear load we have calculated. Now, let us see the other method or the other equation that is used for the calculation of Fw and that uh, equation is A into cos gamma Cv sigma C and Cs. Sigma C, you know the value static stress sigma v, c v we have the value, c s we have the value, gamma we have calculated and the only unknown is a, a is equation is h d 1 psi divided by 57.3. So, h I have already asked you to calculate using the table, d 1 you also you have calculated, now you have to calculate the value of psi, what is psi? Psi is the one half of the phase angle. Now, it is your turn to calculate the value of psi, for that we will go back and we will land here in the equation 
this equation. This is the equation we are talking about tan psi less than or equal to tan alpha divided by tan gamma. Alpha is the pressure angle, we already have the value as uh, 14 and a half or 28 degree, and gamma is the angle that we have calculated or lead angle that is called as a lead angle. So, uh, these two values are readily available with us. So, by using this equation, we can calculate the value of psi. Psi is called as the uh, phase angle or the uh, width angle that is the uh, uh, name of psi. So, you have to calculate psi using the equation 12.52a. So, that calculation part is also over. Now, again coming back to the wear load calculation, all the values are readily available right now. You can calculate the value of a and substitute it over here, you will get the value of fw. There is no need to calculate using those two equations, you can adopt any one. Now, we have to calculate the efficiency. After calculating the efficiency, we will move to the calculation of heat dissipation and uh, heat generation. So, uh, these three steps that means the calculating the uh, efficiency, calculating the uh, heat generation and heat dissipation is very important. Uh, when you compare with the wear load and dynamic load calculation, uh, efficiency calculation and heat dissipation capacities are much more important. So, let us see how we are going to uh, do that. So, in order to uh, calculate the efficiency, we are going to use the equation Bar's formula for the efficiency of the warm uh, one warm V. The equation is uh, tan gamma if it is not clear I will uh, erase this uh, it is uh, tan gamma into 1 minus mu into tan gamma by mu plus tan gamma. So, we have to calculate the value of mu, mu is nothing but the coefficient of friction. So, that can be calculated using the equations given in the tip page number 226. So, uh, mu is coefficient of friction that can be calculated using two equations. One is used when the velocity is less than uh, 2.75 and other one is used for higher velocities. So, in order to find out or sort out the equation from these two, we have to calculate the rubbing velocity. The equation is pi d 1 n by 1000 into cos gamma. One thing you have to be very clear that n 1 should be substituted in RPS because usually uh, in most of the designs we are not converting n from rpm to rps but here in this equation you are substitute to uh, the value of n in rps so upon substitution we are going to get the value of vr so using this vr select the equation and find the value of mu and using this mu uh, we can calculate the efficiency because already we have calculated the lead angle so this step is very important so you calculate this so now let us see how the substitution is being done in our uh, problem. See this is the equation. So, the velocity V r value is 7.5 and this much greater than 2 point something. So, we are going to use the equation for the uh, higher velocities and using that V r we have calculated the value of mu. So, mu value is going to be 0 0.049 and using this value we are going to calculate the efficiency. So, we have to start from V r based upon the value of V r we have to go back to the coefficient of friction and using coefficient of friction we have to calculate the efficiency. This is how you are supposed to uh, calculate the efficiency and the value is going to be some 71 percentage. Now, moving forward with the next step we have to calculate the heat generated. The equation is uh, equation is given as q is equal to mu f n V r by cos gamma that is the equation is mu we have already calculated V r we have lead angle we have now we have to calculate the value of f n. Now, let us go back and see how the f n is being calculated. So, the equation that we are going to use for the heat uh, generation is equation 12.63 a mu f a f n v r divided by cos gamma. We have to calculate the value of f n. For that we will uh, go back to the page number 225 equation 12.56 k. So, in this equation uh, you, you, you can see that f n sin theta is equal to f t into sin theta divided by cos theta into cos gamma minus mu into sin gamma. So, you compare these two uh, terms, the last two terms you have to calculate.
last two terms you have to calculate com compare so sin theta will get cancelled out and equation is going to be f n is equal to f t divided by cos theta cos gamma minus mu into sin gamma all the values are available with you except the value of theta so theta is the angle between f n and the x y plane uh, in this figure you can see the value of theta is given here but equation is tan theta is equal to tan alpha into cos gamma so this value of gamma we have 7 and alpha is 20 degree substituting we are going to get the value of theta that is how you have to calculate the value of theta and obtain the value of theta substitute it here get the value of fn again come back to the equation for the heat generation substitute the value of fn here get the value of q and when it, when it comes to the case of heat dissipation you can use two equations either 12.63 b or c 12.63 b is very simple 1000 into power in kilowatt into 1 minus efficiency or 12.63 uh, c is bit more, more complex 0 0.407 by 10 cube into ag plus aw into t2 minus t1 t2 and t1 you have to assume t2 is the bearing temp sorry the gear temperature and t1 is the ambient temperature you can assume it is something like 80 uh, or uh, 60 or 70 and ambient is 25 and substitute ag and aw ag is the um, area area of the warm gear the value is pi by 4 d2 square and aw is lw into d1 this lw we have already calculated in the step number 4 and we can uh, readily available and we can directly use it over here to get the value of aw so substitute it over here get the value of q and compare sometimes uh, the heat generation will be more compared to that of the heat dissipated so there is no need to uh, give any kind of corrections you can simply state that if it is uh, heat dissipation is greater than heat generated then the design is safe no artificial cooling is required uh, if the heat dissipated is less than heat generated you simply state that uh, artificial cooling is required that is how you have to conclude the design so this is how you have to uh, uh, substitute uh, for the step number 8 9 and 10 so uh, you focus from the step number 4 onwards because up to step number 4 everything is same this is one methodology of solving the warm and warm gear this is one methodology uh, the other methodology is something different where, where the entire uh, uh, initial step that means up to the step number 3 is completely different I will explain that uh, once again here see uh, the second method is that see uh, by using the basic equations uh, if suppose center distance is available uh, or you can calculate the value of uh, d1 uh, and uh, in the Lewis equation what we are going to use is uh, this particular equation see ft is equal to 2 mt divided by d2 this equation we are going to use so mt we do not have so to get the value of mt we are going to use the conventional equation which is nothing but uh, power p is equal to 2 pi nt by 16 that equation we are going to use and we are going to get the value of m and we will substitute it over here and we will get the value of ft so this is one method so this ft can be substituted over here to get the value of module because the in the, if you follow that there is no need to go for any kind of trial and error method that is also another method of solving this it can also be adopted i hope if you don't fo follow what i'm uh, what i explained right now kindly go back to the uh, design procedure in that last slide i have explained an alternative method for the design in that alternative method the way in which you are going to uh, solve is uh, you will initially uh, if you if the center distance is known you can calculate the uh, diameters if the center distance is known you can use this equation to calculate the value of d1 once you have the value of d1 you can calculate the value of d2 so using d1 and d2 you can calculate the value of uh, mt and finally ft and you can substitute it over here get the value of m suppose if you do not have the value of center distance if center distance is completely unknown then uh, this method can be executed by using the equation given in the last page i think one more page is one page is missing here yes one page is missing here uh, on the last page you have got one more equation and that equation uh, 
the equation means uh, point zero two nine zero five eight to the power of one point seven divided by i dash plus five. That is the equation, and that equation is that page is missing in this particular PDF. Anyway, uh, that is also a possible way of solving this. Okay, so uh, in that equation, uh, the unknown is going to be a. So using that unknown a, you find the value of a, and again you follow. Uh, this step using a you find the value of d1 so towards the last page i think uh, the in the page number um, 227 228 is missing 227 uh, you have an equation and that equation is 0.02905 a to the power of 1.7 divided by i dash plus 5 i dash is the gear ratio that is available there with us and A is unknown. A is the central distance. So, using that equation, find the value of A. Once A is available, come back to the equation. Twelve point five one A. Get the value of D one. Again, then you calculate D two. Then you come back here. Uh, find the value of um, uh, torque mt. Using the equation two pi mt, two pi mt by sixty, and get the value of ft. Substitute it over here. Get the value of module. Uh, that is the another method of solving this that is also acceptable so you can select whichever is feasible you can uh, adopt that no issues but these two methods are available uh, for the solution and from the step number 4 onwards everything is same no change because the calculation of air load dynamic load efficiency heat generation and heat uh, dissipation all these steps are same but in the initial three steps you can have two methodologies one is a conventional methodology that we have followed for all the four gears and the second one is the one which i have explained using the diameter uh, and the center distance so this is how we are supposed to solve the uh, problem from the dual gear anyway you have to solve two three questions and only you will be able to uh, understand the design procedure and uh, the way it is being executed thank you